Welcome back to the Win With Dice podcast, a podcast featuring members of the Win With Dice team. I'm Calvin, and I'm joined here by Ramon. Hey guys, happy Mother's Day! That's when we're recording this episode. Yep, uh, like, today yeah. is, in, is indeed Mother's Day. Um, yeah, ha- happy Mother's Day to all those mothers out there, and expecting mothers, and all that stuff. Like, thanks. We're here because of you. Quite literally. Um, Quite literally. <laughs> according to how that works. And, you know, also, um, I don't know. I don't really have anything else to, else to add to that. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And, you know, everyone who, uh, I know for some people, Mother's Day is an awkward situation because their families aren't uh, aren't exactly the best out there. But, um, you know, everyone who doesn't have a uh, mom they want to say happy Mother's Day to, um, I don't know. I'll be your mom for the week. Thanks, Mom Cal. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but this, of course, isn't a podcast all about mothers, Ramon. Uh, it's actually a podcast about tabletop RPGs. Uh, mostly the act of playing them, running them, and hopefully making it seem a little easier to hop on the other side of the screen by, uh, you know, making it seem a little less obscure, a little less mysterious, try to demystify it a bit. Um, sort of like that show that I was just showing how magicians did all their magic tricks. Uh, that's basically the intent of this podcast. To, to reveal all the secrets. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All, all like the trick wires and the smoke and mirrors, it's trap doors, all there. <laughs> yeah. If you look at the other side of a DM screen, it's just all, it's all mirrors. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's just like, just a random dude with a projector. It's like, oh crap, <laughs> I've been found out. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Do not look at the GM behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, don't poke up. Don't poke up my plot. It'll just you'll just break right through. <laughs> it's just paper thin. <laughs> yeah, those are load bearing plot holes. <laughs> those are load bearing plot holes. <laughs> uh, of course, if you have any specific questions when it comes to running tabletop RPG games or playing them or just anything about that sort of topic, uh, be sure to drop it in the comment section below or hit us up on Twitter at Win with Dice, uh, and we'll try to squeeze it into an episode. Uh, or yeah. answer you directly, um, but we we don't mind getting some new episode topics because we want to cover stuff that people want to hear about, uh, which we're doing a lot of this month, uh, is Lancer. So yeah. I know it's a game people are interested in, so we do want to talk about it a bit this month. Um, we recently did a stream, which I want to get into a recap of it. And then, of course, if you want to see what actually happened for yourself, you can always go check out the video and the actual plays uh, playlist that we have linked in the description of this video. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. That was that that session was so fun. But we'll get into that recap right after right after the DM tip of the week. And then Did theme song. Right? It is the oh. win with dice weekly GM tip of the week, but we can call how did, it with... how, did I, how did I say it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, Every I'll, time. I'll leave the th- I'll put the theme song in after your after what you said, so it'll count as well. <laughs> I oh, don't know if we God. really have a name for this section. Um, it's the it's the okay okay. My apologies, everyone. It's the Win with Dice Weekly GM Tip of the Week. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I put that. I get that tattooed so I don't forget. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, hello, folks. It's your friendly neighborhood D- DM GM Master. Of disaster, Ramon here. <laughs> Hello. Do you have yes, a tip for us this uh, week? Yes, I'll dispense you my knowledge from my brains, my giga brain. Um, so, okay, so the tip of the week is let your players name your NPCs. <laughs> you come up with a lot of crap, <laughs> including the story and the enemies and, you know, dumb lore names of places and people and religions and days of the week and holidays. Just... Let, let them name NPCs. Honestly, sometimes they come, they're brilliant. Sometimes they come up with names that are just better, and, and, and the fact that they came up with it themselves, it like sticks with them even more. So they're even more likely to go talk to that guy. I know tons mm-hmm. of moments where um, players just name NPCs, and they just they just stuck, and they just bring it up, and they're like a resource too, because I think that's like half the fun of like making up good friendly NPCs for like the players to go interact with them. But if they just forget who that NPC is, then they'll never go back to the person who has like the thing that they need. 
or that can help them out or whatever right right it's just nice it's just nice so yeah that's my that's my tip of the week uh short one today uh so yeah i yeah yeah, there's definitely like value in that because it gives the player like a sense of ownership over this character and like a piece of the world that they helped to create um i think for i mean i know for me this really works because then i feel more like part of the game world um not just a (laughs) distant observer or a passive observer like oh i'm contributing to this um i actually recently on the stream i'm on on the untold stories project channel uh, recently helps contribute a new NPC for my character because I didn't really have um, like my character didn't really have non superhero friends. <laughs> so just a normie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so I, I kind of wanted him to have something to do outside of like capes and tights. So mm-hmm. yeah, just really enjoying that um, and trying to come nice. up with some new stuff for the, their, that character's backstory. So. Yeah, it just really gives your players enough sense of ownership over the world. Uh, makes them feel like part of your world while playing in your world. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm going to put a bonus tip. Uh, let your players decide what kind of characters they are after creating a name, right? So it's like, I think on the stream, uh, I just made up the name. Um, oh, what is his name? It's like Aiden emberson yes yes i was like <laughs> yeah aiden emberson i just asked calvin to be like okay well, who's what what's aven about like what kind of character is he and just gave it to him and then he just ran with it so it's good it's it's great and uh, i'm pretty happy about it yeah that was that was pretty fun because he, he just he just gave him like one line and i was like okay what can i extrapolate from this <laughs> yeah man creative storytelling that's what it's all about collaborative storytelling Collaborative, creative storytelling. Exactly. These are the words that came out of my mouth. That's, that's what I was trying to say. All right. Enough yeah, of this bit of both. Blam. Half dozen of one, six of the other. But yes. <laughs> Half dozen of one, six of the other. Shit. Slap that on a t-shirt. Yeah, that'll be our first t-shirt. Um, but before we get into t-shirts, uh, let's get into the recap of our previous Lancer stream. Um, now, this was the fifth session uh, that we've streamed so far. Um, and they're all going pretty well. Um, yeah. Definitely I, had a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, I definitely feel like the quality of all the streams have gone up every time we stream, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, it's one of those things that, you know, it'll get better with practice. Like, if you yeah. compare our previous streams to our most recent ones, even our previous um, actual plays or previous podcast episodes to where we're at now, uh, definitely some improvements. So really proud of our team and everyone here. Yeah, all right, cool. So, yeah, uh, we're playing Lancer, the game about mechanized cavalry. Your The players are mech pilots who show up to places and kick ass. <laughs> yep. Primarily, that's their job. <laughs> like any RPG, but this one is mechs. We show up, we kick ass, we, we do it in robots. In giant robots, yeah. Not, yeah. I should say. And, uh, oh, and this system's so great, and I love it so much. Uh, I can't... I can't uh, tell you how happy i am that i found this game actually i didn't know something was missing in my life and apparently it was lancer <laughs> <laughs> but yeah okay cool so yeah these guys work for uh, if you guys have been following uh, a little quick um summary these guys are working for a corporation who basically i mean it runs down to be like an information broker slash um like a mech pilot um uh, I guess I was the word talent agency, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's you know, it's it's not quite mercenary work. It's more nuanced, but basically it's just mercenary work. Um, but uh, yeah, these guys just came hot off their last session of they they busted into a facility and stole some, you know, um, some information like this, some data. They 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 busted into a research facility, stole some data, and then in a cool fashion ejected out of their mechs and blew up while they escaped on a spaceship so that was pretty cool yeah the escape still um, one of my favorite scenes go check out that episode yeah yeah it was pretty dope um and uh uh we started off the session back on their base which is a, a space station where the um the Sondry, at least this office is is located and um yeah you guys got some downtime uh just really quickly i think i only gave you guys like a day of downtime and um, I believe uh, uh, our friend Adrius uh, did some research on the new planet because the mission was to 
um, go and stop some, you know, mercenaries or privateers who are literally draining the ocean out of an ocean planet. Yeah, the planet <laughs> Which... is like 90-95% water and these pirates are stealing their water. Yeah, which is pretty funny, uh, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but yeah, so these pirates are, are literally have like a giant like space tower and is literally just pumping the water from <laughs> off of their their surface like straight up to to space and is like shipping it out. Um, in all actuality, uh, this 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 prompt this like mission came from the book, <laughs> like straight from Lancer's uh, the core rule book, which I thought is hilarious. Um, it's just like on a table of like what are like like uh, mission prompts or like what a story prompts essentially. And there was one where it was just like, ah oh, yes, uh, you know, I thought the whole idea was so ridiculous, but I was like, water world with islands and beaches sounds awesome, man. Like, <laughs> let's do it. it sounds relaxing, um, except for the pirates. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I wanted the feel to be like, you know, you guys. It's just, it's just like like basically a whole bunch of islands and um you know all the people there are really chill <laughs> but like their whole place is like getting wrecked by, by like uh these people taking out the water because you know like uh obviously the environment's being heavily impacted and it's it's not making their their you know their they, they live on that island because they want to right like they're they're planning because they they like the island and, and and their atmosphere of being in the tropics all the time so mm-hmm. yeah well yeah it's basically a tropical planet um which is cool. So yeah, everyone got some downtime. I think Aegis like did some research and they found out about that, you know, it's a water world, so they have krakens. <laughs> yeah, he did discover there were some large uh, oceanic creatures, a, now I'm going to try to pronounce this, Mega Archituthidae? Archituthidae? Yeah. Archituthidae, uh, yeah. Future Calvin will throw it up on screen. Okay, there it is. <laughs> if you can yeah. read that. <laughs> Yeah, which is Arthur days is a scientific term, I think, for giant squid. And then I was like, I'll just throw mega on top. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> so they're mega giant squid, um, among other, you know, mega fauna that would live in the, a big ocean like that. Um, well, it's, it's actually like, okay, it's not like a big deep ocean. It's actually a very big shallow sea. <laughs> so there's like tons of life everywhere. But, you know, draining a big, huge, you know, giant sea is, like, bad anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Skippy, our, our uh, his first name is Skippy. Skippy, the, the starship pilot, started a, uh, a um, basically a military company. Uh, and uh, I had fun, at least for me. I guess I'm really interactive with them. But I sat there and, and um, generated, like, 13 NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> to, to fill out like the crew and like some of his military personnel so that was pretty good but he's currently being blackmailed which is like sucks because he did some research on the previous mission and they're threatening to like tell the people th- he stole from who who he is so you know he's making his com- running his company a little hard but you know he's still doing it yeah he's being blackmailed and... from someone like outside the company right if i remember correctly yeah, yeah. So uh, he's he. Nobody knows. They has investigated. He just kind of ignored it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I don't have time for this. So you know. Um, but when you ignore things, things get worse. That's just how it is. Um, yeah, your character Calvin Hitomi was working on the ship, uh, which I got these cool ship rules the for the SS Ad- Adventure um, mm-hmm. from uh, Castor and Pollock. Um, I forget who is the writer for that, um, but it's a a homebrew setting with some cool homebrew rules for a ship. So, you know, I, I use some of those rules to, to do that. But you also had to, you were also trying to keep up your appearances as a, a IPSN influencer. So you had to go and do like a live stream event for them yeah. while you were working on the ship, which made things a little bit difficult, but you know, you still got through and was able to add a med bay, which is pretty awesome, except something something happened yeah <laughs> there's some wrong. weird sound coming from in the ship i don't know if we know exactly where it's coming from but it's like this repeated humming tapping sound uh very very rhythmic uh hopefully the crew <laughs> has adjusted to it uh because i don't know why it's happening but we have a yes. med bay now yeah <laughs> so that's pretty cool yeah like and, my train uh, of thought was you know we got hurt pretty bad before so we probably need this but that afterwards, I was like, uh, I know, I don't know. Maybe there were other better things I could have put on the ship, but uh, yeah. I, I guess yeah. not. 
No, totally. I mean, like, it's good too because, you know, Corey has a lot of men on the ship, men and women on the ship. So, like, I had this whole mechanic of, like, if they get hurt, because the squad health number is equal to the amount of people there are, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, it's like, anytime you take some health down, that's like people getting injured or whatever. So, you know, having a med bay would make that, like, the, the chances of them permanently dying, like, less. For sure. So, uh, also if everybody else from permanently it. dying. Yeah. I mean, that'd be a bad situation if... if <laughs> I mean, if you did get the use out of it, you mean something has gone horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Just lying in the med bay with, like, this look of relief, because, like, yeah, they used my med bay. <laughs> Yeah, and our and our the the legend himself, Magenta Orangutan, just got drunk for a day. <laughs> yeah, he did. He he hung out with Hitomi for a bit, who is apparently the only one he likes. And Hitomi yeah, is like getting more and more protective of him because she's like something terrible is going on with this guy. I don't know yeah, what. Keeps, keeps saying stuff about his past that sound horrible. <laughs> but yeah, he he drank and he he pissed. He basically just said he hates everybody except for Hitomi. And uh, yeah, that was that was the whole downtime. And then after that, you guys uh, loaded up a bunch of gear, and uh, you know, uh, loaded up onto your ship. And we we you know, I fast forward. You guys are in front of the planet, and you guys got, got kind of got a lowdown on what's going on. And um, yeah, uh, so uh, on the on the stream, you'll see that like I there's like a I, I like to put the ship interior, so I have like a perspective view of like somebody looking out of the ship. And they put a bunch of planets and and stars and stuff behind there, so like people can like it has like a nice visual representation of like what the characters are going into. Because like I don't know, I thought that crap was cool. Oh, uh, so. I mean, it is again. Like I say this every time, but it does look cool, and it's a thing that you can constantly keep updating. So there's different stuff on our radar. There's different stuff on our view screen. We've got the uh, the NHP, um, which is this. Uh, I forget what the acronym is. Non human uh, person. It's a non non human person. Yeah. Okay. Which is, uh, is, it's so an advanced, super advanced AI. So yeah, yeah now, like now we've got the appearance of this NHP on one of our screens. Um, I don't know. I just really like the way that it looks because it's so dynamic and interactive. Like it feels like this is a ship that we're on and things are changing. And we can see this on our screens. This is what it looks like in the game. Like not just in the game, but in the world itself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what inspired me is uh, in your games, you use a lot of... Um, like not even maps, but just scenes, like scenery. Yeah. yeah, whenever you're like you're walking through a forest and we're just kind of narrating, you'll flip through a page that's just like a bunch of trees, right? And I was like, oh man, that'd be pretty cool. But instead of like the, you know, it's just a static image of a ship. I want to find some. I want to build like like so you can see the planet, which what's going on onto it, or if, like there's a space. I can't wait till you guys have like a space fight with the ship, and I could put like like a whole like ship in front of you or a battleship or something and like you know i I can't wait there's like tons of stuff to do for that page and and like oh man all of the cool robots too like the mechs themselves like i think that we use um uh, retrograde minis i think he's a well that's a crazy resource for this game right now um i can't believe this dude exists and is making all this crap (laughs) because it makes running lancer amazing we'll put some links still below so you guys can check it out but yeah, um, he has really nice pixel artwork um, that's customizable for all the mechs, and so I was like, "Oh, we should show these off." So then I made them bigger, and everybody could be able to like get a good look at them and see them, and all the effort everyone put into like coloring them and stuff like that. So it feels like more personal. I like adding that that personal touch to stuff. So yeah, um, just that that particular art, spectacular artwork, uh, especially when we got into the actual combat. I guess we can talk about it a bit more there. Just really helps set the scene, make made things feel and look a bit more consistent. Um, that's why I really wanted to work it into our uh, our overlays, which I'm very happy with, like on our stream, where you could mm-hmm. see the character art and the mech art just to see what the characters look like and what their machines look like. Um, just having it all be that pixel art makes it really look consistent and just brings everything together. It's just, it's like, it's, yeah. like, it's the same as having art um, in a group shot from the same artist, just really brings the whole thing together. Um, yeah, so yeah. I'm really, really happy we've got that as a resource. Oh, it's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, totally. So yeah, you guys got to the planet. You guys saw there's the space tower, but you know, the, the space tower actually has a lot of defenses as in like your ship is, you know, it's a ship. It has point defense guns, but it's, it's definitely not packing like real arms. So getting into a fight with three ships with like actual weaponry will not work no. out. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so, um, uh, the, I mean, you're free to do whatever you want, but the uh, Vanzel, your your handler, the for the um, 
the actual mission said make contact with the locals they'll probably help you out right so um i mean you're there to help them out but they probably have a better idea what's going on um so you guys got a distress you heard a distress signal you guys picked up on like the, the open channels and uh then you guys kind of um uh got you went from orbit to space no, sorry from space to to ground and uh the, that started the first encounter which um which was defend this beachfront as like the planetary defense force the pdf got like was being um pushed back by the um these privateers in their mechs they're they're pushing forward and taking this beach but you you showed up and you were like gonna stop them and um (laughs) cancel the pirate apocalypse (laughs) cancel the pirate apocalypse right so uh, (laughs) which you definitely did oh my god (laughs) <laughs> there was a couple of times where it was a bit harrowing there, um, just because of the function of this battle. Uh, essentially, because it was a not a was it a is it a holdout? As the, am I remembering the name? Yeah, of the, the right mission thing? type was hold. The mission type specifically was holdout. Yeah. Although um, I, I modified it, so spe- specifically the holdout area is actually supposed to be in the center of the board. That's what they suggest, um, and it's also supposed to be a ten by five. Right. Um, but I was like, that's the same area as a two by fifty, two by twenty-five, right? So I was like, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, this is still legal. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I, I actually wasn't aware of the area thing. Um, holdouts we mentioned in our um, last podcast episode when we made a Lancer one shot, where it's just mm-hmm. you and your uh, your, t- your the party is trying to defend like a specific area, trying to keep enemies out of it for uh, six rounds, I believe it is. Um, yep. And then at yep. the end of that, there's sort of like a total score calculated based on how many enemies have made it into the space. And if you're able to keep a certain number of enemies out of this space, then you and your team are able to sort of win that different kind of combat scenario. So it's, it's again, very different than just a normal go here, blow up all the things. You have a different task you're trying to complete in combat. Uh, and there was right, a point where right. we had like three bad guys on the wrong side, but we can get into that as we're describing the events of the combat more. Right, right, yeah. So you know, and, and you know, it's 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 holdouts are supposed to represent like you're just really buying time for for somebody else off screen to do something, right? Mm-hmm. So you guys are were basically um, you, they routed the PDF and the PDF is trying to regroup and essentially you guys are just kind of holding them off until the PDF can regroup and you guys can just like you know push them back. Um, so yeah. Um, it was hilarious. Uh, Magenta Orangutan puts his giant Barbosa mech, who's three times larger than basically every mech on the field, yeah. <laughs> except for one or two, and uh, just plops himself at the very top of the map <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was so funny. Um, just imagining what that and, landing was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right so he's he's there i think everybody kind of spread out a little bit um but you guys are pretty much were centralized at the top of the map and then i had a w- two group of enemies one at the, one coming at the bottom which was like um i guess i'm gonna lose lancer terms but basically two defender dudes with shotguns and a a mech with um it's all mechs a mech with a missile a bunch of missile launchers and at the top i had a big dude with jetpacks and he called out a lot of shots and um a uh was a, the engineer a, guy the engineer guy who was who puts down turrets um and uh a cataphract which is essentially a lance like a cavalry charge with a lance kind of person so he's super fast and um yeah so um it's it's awesome uh, <laughs> i don't know i i i here's the thing with lancer like i get really nervous about um you know, uh, like combat and like making things fun and like interesting, and then like I did all this prep work and I thought about like the plays and then and then we started and I was like, like oh crap, <laughs> let me make this one move because I want to use this new NPC which is the sergeant which is the bigger guy with the jetpack. And I was like yeah let's go in there and that was like my first mistake because I forgot these guys were lancers. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He immediately just got stomped on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forget I mean, what happened. Yeah. I think I think you grappled him. <laughs> like he got in, got shot, and then immediately get grappled by Hitomi's Blackbeard, and it was just kind of like, oh god. 
<laughs> and then... Yeah, my build is getting more effective. I, I still need to get better at grappling people, but once I got someone in my arms, like, right, here comes some right. shredding. <laughs> yeah. So Hitomi is 1v1-ing the, 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 the sergeant. Um, the <laughs> the engineer is like, uh, uh, sorry, I should say like um, Steven is uh, a magenta rank. It puts out this mine uh, that is like if you if you get near it, it explodes essentially. It's like a uh, I forget what they're called, um, but it's like a bouncing Betty mine, so it'll just pop up and blow everybody away. So it's like it will suck. So I had to like go around it. Which is like hilarious because he puts it right in front of him and he was the target I was going for for all everybody up top. But essentially like he was just like a magnet. So he drew all the enemies in while all of you guys are like, no, we must protect Magenta, even though he hates all of us. Like <laughs> exactly. power <laughs> so, teamwork, <laughs> power teamwork. So, you know, uh, the, the engineer, he like walks and puts down this, puts down his turrets for a while. Corey, the, the big brain man he is, he's piloting a Sherman, which has a lot of play with a lot of the heat mechanic in, in Lancer. And I uh, also dumped off a lot of, uh, I guess, specialty gear or gear that they just get to have until they break it, um, like options that they have. So, you know, he, he attached a the camo cloak or a camouflage cloak. I think that's what it's called from one of the mechs. And uh, oh my god! Like I didn't think that thing was gonna be effective. He basically makes them invisible, makes him invisible, and he, everybody has a 50-50 chance to miss. And I missed a lot, yeah, <laughs> like a real lot, which is bad for me, but good for him. And it was it was really quite funny. Um, and then there was oh, and then there was uh, a Adrius, our friend, uh, playing the goblin. So you know that that crap is like so annoying but also super fun um yeah a whole lot of hacking there I, I, a whole lot of hacking i really like yeah. how um because i'm just like I, I i admit i don't watch a whole lot of anime but i get the really i get really get the sense that of sort of like the diverse and different team when i'm playing this game like we're all a different team of people who have different skills and our mechs have different things that they are great at uh, mm -hmm. and different distinct designs and things like that. And I assume that's a key part in this sort of uh, genre <laughs> of story. Um, oh, I just yeah. really love how Lancer makes it easy to sort of fall into those tropes. Oh yeah, and it's and it's awesome. Uh, it's always like the classic Gundam mech where it's like it's like there's a whole bunch of like generic design mechs, and then there's the Gundams, which are like the super powered robots able to blast away like a, a you know five Zaku's or whatever. But you know it, it's it's pretty cool. Like they did like they did a really good job with all the different flavors of mech and like what you can do and like how weird things get like everybody has like a really like you get really weird with the mechs and i like that they went there so it's it's pretty nice yeah um and also completely mod modular so you know you can grab whatever parts from whatever you want and put it together it's nice yes um, so yeah appreciate yeah it. yeah so go, go on <laughs> Oh yeah, so the fight progresses, you know, um, <laughs> and as the fight progresses, I kept saying like the enemies are like, who are these people? Because, you know, they're just fighting locals for so long, and then out of literally nowhere, these four godsends show up. <laughs> these, these main characters show up, and they're like, wrecking house. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, that's what we came here to do. We came yeah. here to kick butt and chew bubblegum, and yeah. I guess we're mostly out of bubblegum, so... Oh my gosh! And the roles of the game were so ridiculous. I kept I, so okay. Here's here's the thing too, right? So like I gave um, the sergeant and the cataphracts all uh, gravity guns, <laughs> which were so funny. Which I really liked. That was a different weapon than we were usually like. It's not just going to damage us. It'll like yank us around. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, and just get you out of position, which is what they wanted, right? They just like they don't really want to fight you. They want to like. Get you out of the way so they can, you know, go fight the weak people, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's way more of those PDFs, and they, if they made a dent in them, they would be way better than fighting you guys. Yeah, because just, um, just like how changing up the uh, the goal of the combat changes the player tactics, it also has to change the enemy tactics as well. So they're not just focused on blowing us up, they're focused on moving us out of their way so they can get in the position they need to be in to win this uh, combat scenario. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, after, so you guys cleaned up the sergeant and probably did a bunch of damage to the, one of the cataphracts. 
um, which is awesome. Retrograde put out a bunch of wrecks, so I put a bunch of wrecks on the field, which are, everybody enjoyed. Um, uh, so then after that, I believe um, your bar, yeah Hitomi went down to the other side of the beast to try and deal with the two defender sentinels and the rainmaker with the one with the uh, missiles who were just who's just been bombarding people <laughs> this entire time and uh, laying in laying in consistent damage. I think rainmaker is probably one of my favorite artillery uh, NPCs to use. Like man, it's awesome. Yeah, I really um, like the visual of just having all those markers all over the map that like it was aiming uh, missiles towards. Mm -hmm, uh, just mm -hmm. again having to compensate for that in our movement. Yeah, yeah, and and it and it and because um, the holdout, well, one specifically holdout says you got to put a lot of hard cover, right? So there's a bunch of hard and soft cover. Lots of there's a couple of line of sight blocking pieces. At one point, you hit behind one, and I literally forgot you were there, yep. which is pretty funny. Uh. <laughs> Right, but it also impeded you because you know it gave the opportunity for um, the rainmaker to put down his um, ha his uh, javelin missile markers, which means like if they map pass through that space, the there's literally like a like a javelin rocket in flight as we as the game's going, and once someone crosses that target, just dives down and lands on them, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, it's 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 nice. Um, there's definitely some stuff that I can turn up the difficulty and take way more advantage of with with the combination of, of all the mechs there but i chose not to i chose to just kind of like play it a little easier <laughs> i mean to be fair that can be said of any game like mm. you as the gm know all the big old secrets and the powerful abilities and everything like that that you can use to turn things in your favor um but you know i feel like we we're at a pretty good balance of like difficulty and ease like this was a uh, a battle like this felt like a battle that um, wasn't easy necessarily, but winnable if we have appropriate strategy. Uh, wherever oh, yeah. you want to put that, uh, that on the chain of difficulty. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, like the the only goal is to just get the me get the people out of the the red square on the sixth round, right? So it's mm -hmm. like if you just kind of turtled up for six rounds and then just made sure that you know there wasn't three people there, then you won, <laughs> right? So uh, it's not, it's like, I, I again, I like Hold, Holdout's probably one of my favorite uh, missions because it just requires, like, it, it, it also feels good as a DM to not just be like, well, I'm going to just pound you into dust, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> right. It, it, gives, it gives me other options to be like, well, maybe I should put in some people who are just fast, <laughs> right? Like, if I could just get there before you at, at the right time, I can, I can make you guys lose. So, you know, it's cool stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we had a lot of uh, fun times as as um, you know you you went down there and, and basically soloed like three NPCs for a while. Um, I know that in the middle ground it was actually uh, the goblin who kept getting surrounded by stuff because <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, uh, they know what a goblin is and and goblins are terrible terrible becks, so they're like nope, not gonna deal with that. <laughs> Gotta kill today. it as fast as possible. Not today. Um, you know, but there are some cool roles. There are some high and low roles happening all the time. Like it was a crazy game. Uh, tons of misses, tons of crits. Like it was nuts. It was very exciting. Um, yeah, but you know, uh, we found out it's the first time I think anybody ever used an NHP before. And uh, now that was <laughs> I think every very interesting. Yeah, I think everybody does NHPs in their own special way. Some of them are like a little bit more on the the. AI side, so a little bit more, um, I guess, computer-like, right? So right. A little bit more, you know, logical. But to me, like, like NHPs are like, are like hyper personalities, right? They're caricatures of a thing. So um, our goblin is is, is equipped with um, the Osiris NHP, and uh, I found a cool picture online. <laughs> and anytime. Uh, he would open. He uses the you know first gate or whatever, like the the goblin ability. I would put him on the map, and I would say, and but because Osiris is like a really narcissistic, thinks he's actually the best because arguably he kind of is a pretty cool because he has the ability to think like his thoughts can unravel reality if he really wanted to, if he thought hard enough. So you know he's pretty powerful, if but he has a big ego. To. If you wanted to, right? Don't don't get him mad. <laughs> oh, that was just so, like a tough guy thing to say. I think I'm gonna egg him on. Let's see what happens. 
Well, he might like it if you're if you're. I mean, to to this, to this point, you're pretty cool at killing people, so he's pretty happy. He likes magenta for at least for, <laughs> yeah, for right sure. now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else is kind of sucks. <laughs> um, so how he he would, uh, uh, Joel the the player had to pander to Osiris so he can actually use his abilities. So he had these cool role playing moments every time <laughs> his character had to get him to, to use the ability. He was like, "Oh, please, Osiris, our great, please." destroy these these fools or whatever he would say although he's he was a little bit snarky about it and i did i know osiris didn't appreciate it he would be a lot more happier if he would just you know do the whole song and dance for him but you know maybe he'll osiris will work on that <laughs> yeah osiris will work. yeah I'm, cause one thing i was really curious about is because i know different frames um different sort of like mechs that you can build have different access to different nhps so i'm wondering like do all the different NHPs already have different personality? Are you like, do you already know what their personalities are, or did you have to oh. craft something for okay. that? Or okay, well, in in in, in like the actual rulebook, there's a little there, like all the weapons and all the options. They have a little blurb. It's usually like sometimes it's from a fir- first person perspective of of a thing, or sometimes like a historical event, or just like a description of what it is. But yeah, all the NHPs have. Um, there's a little bit of lore behind them and uh it usually kind of tells like you know what what this thing is about right because it's like you know and non-human person they're still persons they still have like personality right mm-hmm. so um in, in every description has has like a different thing so it's like one of the nhps is we're really it's like a little bit more um like they they just they want to protect everyone so they have like a protector kind of vibe to them some of them are just like really cold some of them are like really angry so you know there's tons of like different opportunities for role playing and like i think one of the coolest parts about the like the lancer game is like the nhps because it's like you could just have this random funny quirky character hanging out with you all the time now so it's like kind of nice for me to role play off of as a dm to give the kind of like cool descriptions of what's going on yeah, like I'm really, I yeah. really want to get into the personality of the NHP that I've added to my mech. Um, but I just, I didn't feel like I was in a position where I could have activated it comfortably. I thought maybe I could towards the end there, but then I was like, no, it's, it's more effective if I'm doing this own, this specific thing. But if I, if I, if I ever grab someone and I know they're going to be particularly tough, then I'm going to let this thing loose and just see what Man, happens. You, you don't even have to be. You could just, you could just get really close to a group of enemies and just flip it on, right? I mean, you know, you know, you could have done it <laughs> so many times, and I was just like, I was just so excited to 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 bust to bust that one out. But, yeah, uh, I guess I don't know if anyone's as melee focused as I am. Maybe Skippy sort of, but not really. I don't know. Yeah. Well. So maybe yeah, because like my my concern, because I know with my NHP, um, it'll just attack whoever's closest. It doesn't care if they're allied or hostile. <laughs> Which was very yeah. worrying to me, but you know, who knows what could happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we'll see. I'm excited. I have a bunch of ideas. But yeah, so back to Osiris Chen, the greatest <laughs> NHP of the land. Uh, Joel had to appease him to do stuff. So whenever he activated, I described it as uh, Osiris, like literally just like this, this like colossal figure, like this person, man, like humanoid figure of like, looks like he's made out of space. <laughs> just and I showed the picture on um, on the thing. I literally just made a giant, and I just made a. I popped it out on the screen, and it was like, yeah, you see this giant, uh, 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 like figure get out of the, come out of literally nowhere, and just like I described it as like whenever he did something to a mech, he would be like like uh, like second gate like slowed and immobilized and uh, I think impaired a mech. So I had like Osiris literally just put his hand on the mech and the mech looks like it's straining against some heavy weight or something like that through all the screens, right? And he sees Osiris' hand. But then once you pop open the window and actually look, there's like nothing. Because yeah. like NHPs exist in like the digital space, right? Exactly. So Which like you don't like, see him on our cameras or digital screens or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. And I like the idea that like Osiris really thinks of himself as like the greatest. So he will always look down on people. So he'll always be this giant figure, like no matter what, like all NHPs aren't going to be that big or even embody that kind of attitude. But I like the, to show off like the attitude of them. So, yeah, that was cool. That was like my everyone you know, was like, you know, I like NPCs, cool. so <laughs> I'm glad you have more. <laughs> 
Yeah, man. So like the fight goes on and orangutan kind of shoots two dudes dead. Oh, he, and, and he yeeted a grenade to do just enough damage to kill my poor engineer, who all he wants to do is just put his little turrets down and walk forward. Yeah, he needs a new hobby. <laughs> Yeah, it was so sad, man. <laughs> and the one thing I love to do is I love to give the the, the generic NPCs just like names. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Oh, uh, it's so funny. So it reminds people that they're like they're not just robots; they're like real people. But, yeah, there were a lot of times where they like their mechs would be destroyed and they would just like run away. And I mean, I don't know about anyone else. I don't think I don't know if Magenta was okay with that. I know Katomi was okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I just describe them as like anytime you'd like cut a mech in half or something like that. I'd say like, oh yeah, they hit, they hit the ejector button before, right before an ejector because that's what you guys would do, right? Right. I'm thinking like like not everybody just dies instantly when they when they're. Um, mech blows up but i i also personally it's like i kind of want to keep the, the 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 violence a little bit down even though it's like you guys are giant robots with chain axes sawing into each other but um that's just kind of my personal thing about it so uh i, I don't know i thought it was hilarious and i i gave everybody spanish names this time because last time I, I gave everybody just generic white dude names mm -hmm. like bill instead of like bill and tim it was like it was like Juan and Jorge. Yeah. <laughs> Which again, I universe mean, is a big place, so. Yeah, I love I love picking like ethnic names and just like a whole bunch of people there. So it's just like I just gotta pick a name. I should just generate a big long list of names just to drop from every time I'm screaming like, like, I don't know, like Isaac, no, and it's like uh, Bethany, watch out or whatever, Bethany. The mech pilot. I mean, what I can name. I can say again. <laughs> we've probably talked about this like more, multiple times. That's definitely a good idea having that list of names. So, I think you should do that. Separate them by like, I don't know, region or planet or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So at one point, um, I think everybody, I got everybody to brace in one go, which was pretty awesome. <laughs> in one turn, uh, I yeah, got bracing all th three um, of you guys using a brace. reaction to prepare for an attack. So you're you're less effective the next turn, but you you're um you're a bit safer from that immediate attack um yeah I, yeah the 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 our our mvp uh the, the rainmaker just uh happened to able to get a couple hits in it and everybody was about to structure but they all braced except for magenta who was still at the top of the map and just did not move <laughs> and was like <laughs> yeah, magenta don't care honestly uh it's really funny because i feel like steven is just not playing with the the rest of the mechanics of the game he just like waits for his turn. He's like, "All right, who needs to die?" Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then you know takes the shot, um, which I know I think is really funny. But yeah, and then the fight concluded when um, right at the end uh, with with a combination of of our goblin friend um, and Osiris. Osiris, this oh I, I almost forgot halfway through the game. Uh, or the match or whatever you want to call the scene I had a sub show up with more reinforcements and then immediately the, the sub got jammed then stunned and then exploded in that order <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean you put a big old target out there um, it was really cool to fight something that wasn't another uh, traditional mech but at the same time like you line it up we'll knock it down <laughs> Yeah, well, like like Magenta, I didn't really move because I had pretty much range of the map and I didn't really want to. But then I, I didn't really get a chance to show off what it really does because it was kind of like a force multiplier because um, it had some abilities to allow people to move uh, on on its turn. So it was pretty good or gave abilities to uh, make people re-roll if they failed something. But I never got a chance to use it because immediately I got jammed and stunned. <laughs> and then um, I think at the time, uh, if you want to know how to like run a Sherman, um, Corey has a good example in that one. He stabilized a whole bunch and uh, was able to um, build up his Sherman's uh, core ability, which is like this giant laser beam attached to his reactor <laughs> and he fired a shot off and uh, destroyed basically everything in front of him except the cataphract ducked out of the way and there was like a missile flying through the map that ducked out of the way but then the ship got critted on and Corey has an ability to just do max damage so the ship took like 
30 damage, which is a very high in Lancer. And uh, Cory killed that thing in one shot. Even if it was at full HP, it was just hell dead. of a shot. <laughs> hell of a shot. Took him took him the entire combat to get it to get it built up. But man, oh man, like that guy, like I got it. So and then after that, that was like the signal for the retreat. They had to bow out. They're like, no, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> I just kept saying too, like, who are you people? Because <laughs> we came up out of nowhere and then just literally out of nowhere. Wreck yeah. shop. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited to continue doing so to these. Like, why would you steal water? Come on, man, be cool. <laughs> it's okay. So it's actually really funny uh, because it doesn't actually make any sense to steal water. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on who you're selling it to. I assume it's to people who either don't have a lot of water or are selling it to people who don't have a lot of water, like reselling it or transporting it or whatever. Like I was yeah, imagining, but... I don't, I, don't, I guess I don't know how it works, but I was imagining like once they get the water into space, that's where it like freezes and then they transport the ice blocks to some either like a desert planet or I don't know, maybe we'll find out more when we once we actually get in there. That's true. You don't know who these people are working for. Yeah, I, 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 like, I was assuming it was like they're coming here to mine this natural resource so only they have access to it. I don't know, I don't know. maybe they'll hold the planet hostage at some point. Who knows? Yeah, we gotta talk I mean, to the people around here. The locals. Yeah, you guys didn't get a chance. You guys just showed up to be... First you gotta establish yourselves as being the heroes, right? So I mean, now I you guys you are the heroes. <laughs> yeah, I think you did too. And, um, you know, uh, it was awesome. It was fun. I had, actually, it was it was probably one of my best games I ever ran. I think we had, we were, like, laughing the entire time. That's how I know it was a good game. Like, yes. everybody was having lots of fun. Um, you did mention, I don't know if you said it when we were on audio or off, but, like, you had forgotten we were streaming just because we were so into the game. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was like, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if I could if I could describe our Lancer stream to people, it's like we're just a bunch of petty people, like just like, <laughs> laughing at everyone's misfortune. I think it's hilarious yeah. um, because you know we're, we're we're all we're all friends. Like we're all we're all real good friends. So anytime something bad happens to somebody, it's just like ah, like <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Basically, um, I'm really happy that I'm understanding the game a, a bit more. Um, I was asking. Yeah, I guess I was asking a lot of questions, but it was a lot of like, yeah, that is how it works. And I was like, okay, thank God. I know what I'm doing. I know how to Lancer oh, now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. You guys are super effective. And like, like I felt like I was on the back foot. I, although I know that I was like, the things that I did were not just murder you guys, right? <laughs> I, a good example, if, if you want to go into the kind of grittier end of things, I think we had some time. So um, yeah, we have time. Yeah, so, you know, for, for NPC design, like, I needed to give the people with guns something that wasn't a gun, right? Um, because I think um, in the chat, um, NHP Shaka said it, and uh, he was like, that was a lot, that's a lot of strikers, because strikers are the damage dealers, uh, really, like the, I guess, the um, mid-range up, or mid-range to close-range damage dealers in, in Lancer for the NPC type, right? And uh, he was right. Um, I had a lot of cataphracts. I had a lot of dudes with guns that were able to do a lot of damage and movement and the, lots of maneuvering. Um, but, you know, I chose a lot of the times to just shoot the gravity rifle because I just needed another option, right? And it was, and it would have been better to get you out of position than, like, you know, doing as much damage as possible. Um, as well, the cataphract can, ca the cataphract will, uh, work really well with the, um, the, uh, uh what's it called? The, the missile mech, uh, Rainmaker. The Rainmaker? Yeah. yeah. Because of the javelin rocket specifically, because the cataract, the cataphract has an ability to move in a straight line and pick some, essentially impale somebody oh, and, then and move drag them, them yeah, along. Yeah, yeah. So move it them, can right? move someone right to where a missile is aimed, uh, it, and drop it can them down. Move, it can, yeah, it can move that character through all of the missiles if you line it up so Ooh. if you think about it the yeah you're taking two damage plus 15 so that's 17 damage and i don't know what anyone's max that's a lot of damage <laughs> yeah i know that'll definitely uh definitely right, start to break right. something off right as well as the gravity rifle i try to do it so many times to line up the gravity rifle with the um with the javelin rockets because it's like a cool one-two punch but never happened <laughs> it just kept missing and i like that the gravity rifle has a two-stage thing where it's like you hit great but then they have to uh fail a hull check or hull save and uh, a lot of times you guys passed it so you guys didn't even get booped or whooped yeah i should say 
because I know my mech is great at hull stuff, so... Um, yeah, the, yeah, I, I had a goblin really fail listen. fail his invade. Yeah, the goblin failed his invade at one point, and then it passed its hull check. Two things that it one, one's yeah. really bad at, one's really good at, which is hilarious. And if you don't, uh, know, I don't know what know that Joel... means, then watch our game. Oh yeah, it's it was it was nutty, man. I loved it so much. It was such a good good example of how cool Lancer is. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, like, again, I, I didn't use my super big brain on that one. Um, I definitely did a lot of fun stuff as just, like, charge in and see what happens. Um, but yeah, no, that's kind of the fun part of Lancer. Even though I did that, you guys had a, a little bit of a struggle there for a little bit. I yeah, because so um, yeah. I was really worried. Because um, if, if we want to briefly explain how damage works, like, once you get a certain amount of damage mm. in Lancer, uh, something is going to go wrong with your mech. And because yeah. um, some of us have NHPs now... One thing that can possibly go wrong is just the uh, NHP. Uh, I the term you used was cascades. Yes, cascades. So, yeah. So like a I guess like a breakdown in function and it takes over the machine itself, if I recall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they take control of the mech that it's it's uh, attached to and they get to do whatever they want because they're in control, right? Um, the only way to really get back control is to actually like uh, hard reboot the mech. Literally shut it down and, and turn, turn it, it off back on. and turn it back on again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or have some sort of ability that allows you to um, uh, shackle them back, essentially. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a cool mechanic. I love, I love the idea that these things aren't actually just AI. They're like, they're almost just their own, like, complete eldritch entity, like, not, not, nowhere near being human, but human, humans, uh, decided that we need to use this thing because it's super advanced, so we're gonna, we're gonna take it and, like, squish it down to a portable, usable mentality, essentially, and, <laughs> like, yeah, well, well I mean, the, the term is non-human yeah. person, like, it, yeah, is functionally a person, so, yeah, it's like it's like dangerous. It's like it's like a tune. It's like akin to fire, right? It's like you can really do a lot of damage with fire, but it's also super useful. So, yeah, what to do? Yeah, um, super fun. I don't know. Is there anything else you want to cover for this game, um, or cover in Lancer in general? Um, I don't know if you want to talk about the sub a bit more. I don't know if they have anything anything more to say about the submarine. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was really funny. You guys are fighting out in the sub. <laughs> I like to describe that the sub is like staffed with people. So like anytime like, something happens to them, I just like, I always cut back to the inside of the the uh, cockpit shots, I guess, when I'm narrating. That's like one of my favorite things to do. Um, so, you know, I had when, when Osiris uh, stunned the mech, I had, had him, you know, re use, his, like, use his space hand and reach inside the mech, which then all of the screens and all the technology just had hands coming out of them essentially yeah and was just gunking up all of the stuff that the the submarine the poor submarine people and i also love that too i, I call my npcs who are the bad guys by the way i was like these poor people showed up to work just to shoot some dudes didn't want to get lancer today and he's getting lancer oh they got very lancer <laughs> yeah yeah I, I always like to describe the players as the bad guys well they're from always the so perspective. No, totally. You guys are scary. There's always just like a path of death and destruction when you guys leave a place. Like they had like ten dudes, and there's only four of you. <laughs> like they're like, oh god, those people are so scary. Why are they here? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like I, I um, again, like we're it, it, it is sort of like that difficulty sweet spot. It's sort of in the middle. Like you can definitely win this battle, but just don't like let your guard down or do something foolish. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. How was your feelings on it, Calvin? Because I know that I, 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 it was a little bit of time, well, a lot of time, like a month and probably like a month and a half or something like that, between our the end of our last stream and the beginning of this stream, like this this session. I did change a lot and add a lot of things, so I want to get your opinion on it. Um, I guess with like regards to the game itself, or yeah, 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 or the just game like itself. In general. Yeah. Um, Whatever you want to talk about. Again, like really visually interesting, getting all those new tokens on there, getting more use out of them. Um, even like once we defeated an enemy, it became a wreck token, which could then be used for cover and things like that. I thought that was really great. Uh, loved having Osiris up there. Uh, loved having that new character as part of the team. Really liked doing all that downtime stuff. Um, I mean, now that you've given me a ship crew, uh, I want to like learn everyone's names. I guess the only reason I didn't really immediately do that is because it was I didn't want to interrupt. Um, 
the town time for Skippy, because I was like, who are all these people? <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the crew was pretty fun to come up with. I just, I just found, like, a generic um, character generator, and I kind of took up bits and pieces of it and kind of smushed it into, like, 13 characters. So, you know, they're all 13 characters with different likes and dislikes and hobbies and, and stuff. So I'm excited to see what people talk to them. I'm also excited to have, like, a... Like a like a death counter <laughs> just like just like put behind their name deceased because <laughs> i play a lot of xcom <laughs> oh, every time okay. one of your dudes dies there's like a the memorial so i want to have like a memorial for the ship so every time you guys go in there you guys would be like oh yeah i forgot that emma died or whatever <laughs> so sad i'll put like how many missions they went on <laughs> oh man yeah their whole service yeah. record that would be yeah it would be pretty I mean, legit i think yeah. it's hilarious yeah, I'm um, excited for that. If you want to put that somewhere where we can all see it. Uh, as yeah. well, I do like this new uh, kind of wrinkle or complication that you've given my character, that she has to be like this social media influencer. Because my idea for her was just like this grungy mech type of person, mechanic type of person rather, whose hands yeah. are always covered in some different kind of grease or oil or smudges or something from constantly working on machines. But now it's like she has to clean herself up every now and then to uh, appear... Uh, on the internet <laughs> and uh, I mean for one I'm feeling that because I gotta like I gotta actually cut my hair soon because I'm on camera on other streams <laughs> and it's like oh man yeah. I could like I could see my face and it's like I should probably cut this beard off because I look like a mess <laughs> but also yeah. like I guess now because I I don't really play Overwatch but I guess my character is kind of turning into uh, D.Va a bit um, yeah. except D.Va but like messier um full gremlin <laughs> diva yeah well you know that's the thing too right i mean your character if you guys want to that's the thing everything is um optional right so it's like right. it's, it's because you 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 pulled on that um that that influencer kind of beat um that we had like a couple missions ago when i gave you the first reward actually i think it's like you can you know do some pr work with um north star to get like an extra core battery i mean an extra core battery is like really important like every mech has every mech frame has an ability to kind of just like it's like an alt essentially so every mech has an alt and they run on core batteries so if you have an extra one you could alt twice which is pretty significant which i think you did you use one core battery i think during a narrative mission during the the break-in mm -hmm. mission yes and um a narrative section and then uh use it right at the right at the end to kind of drop kick some people into the off of a cliff which is pretty dope <laughs> yeah um, yeah. Again, like just because we because we won that as part of something else we were doing, so again, just feels more earned in a way. Yeah, you follow that plot for as far as you go. All I know is is that if you want to keep using um, those resources or those people, they're gonna probably start asking you for some more uh, stuff, right? More of your time, more of your 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 you know the, your downtime, essentially, right? Yeah. But to, just to keep up, I mean, it's a useful connection for sure but you know it, it might strain on you a little bit and like everybody's stuff for downtime i'm excited it, it took me so long in, in all honestly it took me very long to kind of noodle my head into that space and being like what what am i doing for their everyone's downtime <laughs> right what what little plot threads can i put in there and i kind of had to outline it um oh one thing i wanted to shout out is uh as well as the uh personal character notes like the little table i put together where it kind of like quickly sums up like anybody can open it up and go to their character and see like um what resources they have during downtime um what um reserves that they have for personal reserves for their character uh what connections they've made who can they call on and like what little plot threads that they have going on so anytime something they progress one of those things i'll add in like a little another note and sometimes it's just like this is difficult or or like you know or add a little flavor text like maybe it's like a first person um response or something like that i'll add in but uh i don't know i like th the one thing i like too is magenta's reserves are always really ambiguous because <laughs> i know steven mm -hmm. <laughs> he likes that so steven has i like to give i like to give little flavor stuff like steven has the la his last pack of smokes <laughs> which i put in as a reserve and then underneath the description it's like it's like it's it's the last pack of smokes of a of a brand that discontinued that was discontinued Ooh. i don't know how yeah I don't know. I don't know how he's gonna use it, but it seems super valuable. <laughs> yeah, I love right? that kind of thing. Like, I don't know what you're gonna do with this, but here, let me put it in your hand. Yeah, and, you and basically, just take your point with it. 
Yeah, basically it's just like, hey, do you want to, you know, get something or get out of something or convince someone to do something? It's like, apply smokes. Like, <laughs> 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 depending on the person, but it's like, you know, and uh, I love stuff like that too. Where it's just like, it's like ambiguous enough for everyone to kind of play with and be useful, but also just like fun. It's like fun and ambiguous and lots of role-playing opportunities for that. Yeah, that is best part. Um, I don't know. Really, I, I hope we get to do some more downtime stuff or just like more RP in combat because that's really fun to do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still trying to find my way around this character a bit. Now that, I've, now that I'm more comfortable in the game, I'm trying to find my way around this character a bit, so I'm so excited to do more RP stuff like that. Um, yeah, like I wanted to do more downtime things because I was running... <laughs> that was a busy day for me because I was running a session that day. So, like, after yeah. we played that game, I was like, hey, if you guys want to do some downtime stuff, let me know, and we'll try to figure something out. Uh, didn't really get to in that session, but some other really awesome stuff happened that um, I'm not sure when we'll get back to doing my own Pathfinder recaps, because we're doing so much Lancer, maybe another week or two, and then we'll do those if you're all dying to know what's happening in my Crown of Dragons campaign. You know, to be um, honest with you, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. I'm a big fan of the Crown of Dragons campaign. <laughs> oh, man. You've got... Some really, really awesome stuff just happened that uh, I can't wait to tell you about. But um, yeah. for the most part, Lancer is just like now that I'm getting more into the system, uh, I'm definitely seeing all the incredible pieces of it. Um, like, like, like with like with systems with systems that I really like. Um, there's always some standout mechanic that I want to poach. Like even with Five E, I really like the advantage mechanic. Um, and with mm -hmm. this, I like a whole lot of um, the way they set up different kind of scenarios and things like that, the downtime stuff. So, I don't know, probably yeah, going to yoink yeah. those for other other games. Yeah, man, take it. Take take what you need and leave the rest, man. That's, that's the, the DM tip of the week again. <laughs> Part three. <laughs> Part three. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so, yeah, again, like, if you all want to check out that video, uh, be sure to look at the description because we've got a whole playlist of our actual play series. Um, even if you just check out the last couple of episodes, which I think are some of our best stuff, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, oh, yeah. So you can you don't have to see or hear the audio issues we had in our first episode because uh, <laughs> I don't know how to stream properly. That's okay. I think we worked out all the kinks, hopefully. Yeah, um, no. I, I yeah. had my mic off for like 20 minutes and I didn't know. So. <laughs> Hell yeah, I forgot about that. So nice. skip that Classic. episode. But <laughs> Classic Calvin. <laughs> but uh, be sure to check out the rest. We'll have that in the playlist. Uh, be sure to check out all the... We mentioned some uh, Lancer content, uh, Caster and Pollux, um, Retrograde Minis. We'll put links to those uh, in the description as well for you to check out. Uh, just be sure to check out that awesome stuff. Check out the game itself. Uh, buy it if you want to run yeah. it. Um, if you don't want to just check it out as a player. Um, you can also go to CompCon, which is something I... Um, now that I like, I actually looked into the Compendium tab, and I'm like, oh my god. Here's how you play a Lancer. <laughs> <laughs> just like yeah. seeing the page with all the actions, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> There's so much you could do. Um, it's nice. Yeah. But like now I can like fully understand things because sometimes I would hear terms and I'd be like, I don't know what that means. Let me go look for it in the book. But now I can more easily see them here. So check out CompCon as a compendium for the Lancer rules. Uh, yeah. But more so get the book as well um, for all yeah. the GM stuff. Yeah, I, I legitimately cannot believe the amount of um, support that the com like the the creators and the community have for this game. It just feels like there's just so. If you want to run a fabulous game of Lancer, like there's so many good resources for you to use, and you and your your table and your players to use. Like it's it's awesome, and I I really appreciate everybody who's doing it in the community. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, Lancer and, community uh, feels yeah. really connected to me, so I really I really love that. Um, not sure much. I don't have much else to say on Lancer itself. Um, other than again, check out those links. Uh, as for other links as well, as well as our own social medias. Uh, again, I'm going to keep shouting them out. <laughs> Untold Stories Project on Twitch. Uh, I also have a link to it there, where I am a cast member on their weekly uh, Mutants and Masterminds game. 
uh that is that is my lancer that's my favorite system because i love superheroes so much and that's just a great system to get into and using it um our last session actually was very rp heavy um sort of how the beginning of this one was um no actual combat was in that session uh except for like Ooh. a single punch that got thrown near the beginning um it was all just character stuff uh one player had like a really awesome sort of thing where they uh, met every other character individually and we all learned things about ourselves which i thought was a whole lot of fun <laughs> um nice as well i got to be in my character's secret identity um so i got to stop being the the grim badass normal hero and had to put on the full uh, wealthy playboy face which was fun to do so yeah oh, you awesome. should go definitely check that out it was a fun episode uh check out our other streams those are also incredibly awesome just put them on in the background of something um but they do have visual components i'm really proud of our layout so you know if you're playing our video at least look at it for a bit <laughs> <laughs> just pause and sick soak it up <laughs> yeah just soak it in uh that's <laughs> All I have to say on that, check out our website, womenfithdice.ca. We can see more uh, of our content. We have some of our, some Lancer character art, uh, as well as some art from like our other games and stuff like that. Um, images of our Starfinder ships, um, some pictures of characters in our Pathfinder campaigns that we've mentioned before. So more awesome stuff that you can see there. Uh, uh, also, if, if you're running yeah. Lancer in Roll20, uh, believe I i'm using whatever macros i've created i think we put it on the website correct we have a couple of them so far um i definitely yes. want to keep putting up more but we do have a couple of the official macros used by the wayne with dice lancer actual play series Ooh, official <laughs> yes uh yeah if there's if, i'll keep adding more um as i make them but yeah there, there's simple buttons that you can put into your roll 20 game to make stuff like over the overheating table and like the uh overcharge t table rolling all that stuff and structure and all that stuff so it's all automated so you don't have to worry about it yeah uh yeah. so if you want to go take the code for that and put it in your game uh you can go and do that um i'll put a link for it as well cool and I think that's about covers everything. Um, all of our normal outro stuff for the episode, I guess, except for the one the one thing that I continuously forget every week somehow. <laughs> Do What's I actually that, forget Calvin? it? <laughs> what is it? I don't well, know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ramon, since you're the one who always reminds me, I got to tell you, uh, it's a reminder to our audience to keep on winning with dice. <laughs> we will... All right. We will see you in the next episode. Uh, we're closing. Okay. We're closing in on fifty, so we're almost at a year of this podcast. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure we'll think of something fun to do. Yes, we'll do something fun. All right. Thanks for uh, tuning in, guys. Uh, we'll catch you next time. See you later. <laughs>